it's cold, it's an alley, it's Colorado in December. It's supposed to get down to two degrees, freakishly cold. Anything that can freeze is gonna freeze, including you. And I don't wanna see that happen. What's got you out here? I don't have any wash to go, I'm homeless. Once you get on the streets, it's really difficult to get off. What we are looking for is people that are vulnerable, people that are on the street. Scary, lonely, cold. And honestly trying to change their lives. How can this be happening? How can this be happening? I'm one of the homeless outreach officers. The homeless outreach unit has got a direct line to all of the day centers, the drop-in shelters, the overnight shelters, the mental health pieces. I want to cash in and get out. I don't want that to be the thing that keeps you on the street. We seek people out and we try and get them connected to those services. I want to get some semblance of a life back. We have an obligation and a responsibility to the homeless citizens of Denver. We take that very seriously. Get in there tonight, okay? Yeah, I think I better. I'm Officer Rob Parks. I'm one of the four Homeless Outreach Unit officers. We specialize and deal exclusively with the homeless population throughout the city and county of Denver. I start my 11th year in January. I'm trying to uh, find the uh, court clerk. I need to clear up some uh, misdemeanor warrants for... Let me pull around right behind this car and I'll talk to you, okay? okay. So he just flagged me down, but... I'm also seeing some indications that it may be somebody that I would have talked to otherwise. We'll see where this goes. I'm trying to get into treatment, so I want to find the court clerk so that I can get Outstanding. Released. Who are you trying to seek rehab through? Um, it's uh, through the Salvation Army. Yeah. Are you a part of their program now? Not yet. No. Are you staying with Salvation Army at all? No. Where are you staying right now tonight? I am on the streets. I'll probably go to uh, uh, one of the shelters up here. It's pretty depressing, actually. <laughs> Once you get on the streets, it's really difficult to get off. You got to get a job, and then you got to get a place, and if you're drinking, it just doesn't work out. I want to see if there's anything else that I can do some follow-up with because I'm one of the homeless outreach officers. I'm the guy really? that gets folks connected to long-term housing, gets people into rehab centers, gets people exactly in your situation the resources that you might be looking for. How long have you been on the street? Uh, off and on for about 15 years. 15 years? Yeah. What's got you out here? Alcohol and drugs. My alcoholism kind of got out of hand and um, I lost my family and, and they didn't want to really deal with me anymore. Honestly, I just got out of detox and I'm kind of transient and on the streets since then. Are you familiar with the Crossroads Shelter at all? A little bit. Okay, that's at 1901 29th Street. They will take you, especially if you go there tonight. It's supposed to get down to two degrees tomorrow morning. So if you're outside, there's a good chance that you're gonna suffer something negative from the cold, either losing a finger or toe or just freezing to death, and I don't want to see that happen. Perfect. I'm going to give you a sheet because I want you to have the information. All right, thank you. So this is one of our resource guides. So what we're looking for, Salvation Army Crossroads. It's right at Arkins and the Platte River, right off of Brighton Boulevard. Perfect. It's pretty well lit, heated. It's not a bad place to be at all. All right. Thank you so much. Take care of yourself. All right. Get in there tonight, okay? Yeah, I think I better. I want to get some semblance of a life back. I mean, I have a bachelor's degree and I worked as a professional for uh, several years and that's when alcoholism kind of took over. I have a granddaughter that I haven't met yet and I miss having a connection, you know, having family in my life. We don't differentiate, we serve all comers. What we are looking for is people that are vulnerable, people that are on the street, people that are in some kind of a negative situation. We're gonna see if we can't make that better today. So this is Father Woody's Haven of Hope. Father Woody's is far and away one of the best resources for people that are just out in the cold and need to get inside for a minute, get something to eat. Hey guys. 
Have you been going to Woody's for a while, I'm guessing? Uh, off and on for a couple years. I unfortunately find myself uh, coming here more often than I'd like. Yeah? Why is that, if you don't mind my asking? The short answer? Alcoholism. Alcoholism. I'm certain of very few things, but one thing I'm certain of is that every negative thing that's ever happened to me is associated with my alcohol use. I've always been, you know, been able to deal with my work and my responsibilities and whatnot. It just finally caught up with me. So, are you in a house now, or what's your living situation? No, I, uh, I stay at the shelter when I can, and uh, oh, yeah, you know, I do a lot of urban camping. Yeah. You know, I'm, a, I'm immediately identified as homeless, and most people have an immediate negative reaction to that. You know, even though I was an accomplished professional for 30 years of my life, now all of a sudden I'm scum, <laughs> and it's really hard to take. I'm trying to turn it around, but you know, it's, it's hard when you don't have a home base. Which shelters are you taking advantage of? Mostly the rescue mission. Mm -hmm. Do you ever take advantage of the, any of the other drop-in centers, like the new Lawrence Street Center or the St. Francis Center? I haven't yet. Are you familiar with them, or do you know about them? Okay, so they've got that courtyard, that indoor area. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah so yeah. that's their their day center. Tomorrow at six in the morning, it's going to be two degrees outside. So anything that can freeze is going to freeze. So I would really encourage you as much as I can. It, it sounds like you know how to take care of yourself, but I would encourage you to seek safe, legal, warm shelter. It's a lot worse. Now that the weather's changing, scary, lonely, cold. How can this be happening? How can this be happening? You know? Come on over to the car, because I want to make sure that you're armed with as much information as I can give you. You know that there are other places you can stay overnight, right. which you're already staying at the rescue mission. Uh, Crossroads is going to be another great place to be. St. Francis Center, right up at Curtis and Park Avenue. Yeah. St. Francis has a lot of the same services, just in a different part of town. Day shelter indicates they no overnight Correct. Uh, kind of thing. Well, that's very helpful, sir. All Appreciate right. It. So make sure you keep that and seek somewhere safe, legal, and warm tonight. I just don't want you to be out in this overnight. I don't. Thank you. I don't want to be out in it either. Well, you, you come to places like this and hang for as long as you can. <laughs> and, I, and I keep moving, you know. I, Keep moving. I'll figure it out. I can't, I'm too old for this. We serve the entirety of the citizens of the city and county of Denver. We have an obligation and a responsibility to the residents of Denver. And at the same time, we have that same obligation and responsibility to the homeless citizens of Denver. So we take that very seriously because we have to look out for everybody's best interest. And so my job is to do the best that we can to mediate between all of those different factors and make sure everybody's getting a fair shake. It looks like there's one person under a blanket here or a sleeping bag. How are you doing, partner? Do you know, is there anybody else here? It's, it's just you? So. I gotta ask, it's cold, it's an alley, it's Colorado in December. Why are you out here in a sleeping bag in an alley in December? I don't have anywhere else to go, I'm homeless. What about friends, family, anybody you could couch surf with or at least get indoors for a bit? Are you familiar with the shelter system in Denver? Yes. Have you stayed in any of the shelters recently? Yeah. What's the last place you stayed? Crossroads. It's gonna get deathly cold tonight. It is gonna get so cold, anything that can is gonna freeze, including you, and I don't wanna see that happen. What would keep you out here as opposed to getting back into Crossroads tonight? It's a last resort, I guess. You're saying Crossroads is a last resort? A any any of the shelter. Any, Why is that? I guess just uh, the situation itself, I guess. I mean, I don't know. So is there a light at the end of the tunnel for you? Do you have? something that you're trying to work towards or tell me what you've got going on well I, my wallet was stolen so i'm just trying to replace my uh, driver's license and my birth certificate st francis they can 
help take you down to the DMV and help fight through the process to actually get your ID. Because that is one of the first steps for you to get into almost any other service. People want to see a photo ID. With your ID, you go a couple of blocks down, maybe you get a job that day. That's one of the biggest things that holds people up. All right, sir, take care of yourself. Probably one of the toughest questions that we face, and we ask ourselves that a lot, is what is the silver bullet? What's the solution to it? With a lot of the individuals, that answer is found in honest to goodness mental health care. Getting people into sustainable solutions for them. Take a look at that camp. So these are some of the most service resistant. These are folks that for any number of reasons have decided that they don't want to seek shelter. So I want to talk to a couple of them and find out what it is in their mind that's keeping them out of the, the services and the shelters that are available in Denver. Watch your feet for needles. You and I personally have been talking for the past year or so. I've come out and talked to you when you were over behind the Sears building and... Right, right, right. So what still got you out here though? Look, the trailer right there is filled with nothing but scrap that needs to go and I can't get darn right in. I want to cash in and get out. I've come out time and time again and you're still out here. I know. So what is one thing that I might be able to do that'll start a positive change for you? Like I said, if I can just get my scrap in. Here's my concern for you. Tonight, it's going to get freakishly cold. Collecting scrap, collecting light fixtures, collecting stakes out of a dumpster, I understand there's value to it, and I'm not trying to take that away. You have a lot more value than a scrap that I see that you collect. When we talk about Ron, you see immediately the issues of hoarding. I don't want that to be the thing that keeps you on the street. And it seems like right now, a lot of your stuff that's outdoors is what's keeping you on the street. Right. Would you agree with that? Yeah. Even if he were to completely clean everything you just saw, within a month, it's back to this situation that it's in now. Would you be willing to talk to somebody about maybe some of the issues that I may or may not be able to help you with as a person, but I might be able to put you in touch with somebody that can. Sure. Somebody from MHCD, somebody that's in the mental health field that might be able to help you identify and work through some things. Right. You'd be willing to do that? Sure. All right. Definitely. Like I say, once they get into the scrapyard, things will be a lot different. Not everybody needs the same mental health care treatment. Not everybody needs mental health care treatment. Some just need basic rental assistance. Some of them need vocational training to change a career path to where they, they get into a viable field. My personal hope would be that we connect the right people to the right services, and it really comes down to that.